This episode is sponsored by Landmark College. Landmark summer programs are designed to help high school and college students find their learning strengths and differences. Learn more at landmark.edu forward slash summer. Hello and welcome to Distraction. I'm your host, Dr. Ned Hallowell. I'm thrilled to welcome back to the podcast today one of our favorite, if not our absolute favorite guests, Jessica McCabe, McCabe from How to ADHD. She is uh, the queen of the kingdom of ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate this coronation. I wasn't aware. It's fantastic. Well, well deserved. Uh, this episode is made possible by our sponsor, Landmark College in Putney, Vermont. Thank you so much for joining us, Jessica. Thank you so much for having me. Now, what what do you what do you want to talk about today? Oh gosh, there's so many things I want to talk about. Let's narrow it down. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so this is something that I'm going through personally right now, and I find it interesting. And it's something that I wish that I had known when I was in college because this is one of those mind blowing. Oh my God, this makes so much sense to me. Um, moments as I was doing a talk recently for a university about how to ADHD when the world is on fire, because it kind of is right now, right? We've got COVID, we've got this global crisis, plus whatever individual crises we have going on, um, you know, whether that's with our job or our housing or, you know, the class we forgot to register for. Um, we, we're always, you know, it's like everybody's going through crisis right now. We're all in this huge crisis together. And it really is making me think about how our brains respond to a crisis. Um, ADHD years can be really great in a crisis. And one of the reasons for that is our brains are chronically understimulated and crises are stimulating, right? Everything is very clearly now. Uh, your brain kind of tells you like, ah, run from the flaming storm bear. And your brain's like, yes, I should do that now. That is not something I should procrastinate on. Um, let's let's run from the storming flame bear now so that, uh, you know, we'll be alive later. Um, it just, it activates our brains in a way that not a lot of things do. And so we naturally do respond really strongly to crises. Well... <laughs> The problem is, A, not everything is crises, and B, not everything is our crisis. Uh, in college, I dropped so many things. You know, a friend was having an issue. Like, okay, cool. Like, let me go take care of her instead of going to class. Or, um, uh, God, it was just, it was one thing after another. It was, um, oh, like, I had a friend who was schizophrenic, and, and she needed something. So, like, let me drop everything studying for the test that I needed to study for and go take care of her. Let me go pick up a drunk friend instead of doing the studying or the paper that I'm supposed to be working on. And at the time, I thought that this was a good thing, right? Like, oh, I'm being a good friend. I'm I'm being, you know, a supportive family member. If I drop the audition that I was studying to, <laughs> to if, if I didn't go to the audition that I was supposed to go to as an actress because my mom needed me for something, that I was being a good daughter. Um, but really... I was avoiding, I was procrastinating, and I was just doing it by responding to a crisis. And I didn't realize that at the time, and I really wish that I had. Um, the research is really interesting on this. ADHDers do have a really strong tendency to avoid negative stimuli. And one of the ways that we do that is by avoiding the thing that's boring, that we don't want to deal with, in favor of something that is going to give our brains that stimulation that we need. And this is something that I just want people to be aware of because I wish that I had been aware of it. If everything feels like it's on fire, if there's a crisis, ask yourself a couple of questions. One, whose fire is this? Because sometimes it's not your fire. Sometimes it's your roommate's fire and you there's no reason for you to be standing that close to the fire. You are not the one who should be putting it out. And if you do go put it out, now your life is on fire, right? Um, and... To why am I doing this? Why am I responding to this crisis? Is it because I'm the only person that can help? Um, is it because I am getting out of something that I don't want to have to do? Because it's this, there's something that comes along with a lifetime of only doing things when we're in crisis, you know, only studying the night before the test. Um, eventually, we start having a really hard time getting started on things because we remember that 
when we do, it sucks. Like we don't get to sleep. We have to stay up all night working on this paper. So we have this anticipatory anxiety of working on the paper. Or maybe we have anxiety and perfectionism about it too. And so we get a break from that anticipatory anxiety by responding to whatever's urgent in the moment. Whether or not that's important, we often do get that break from that anticipatory anxiety by responding to somebody else's crisis or to something that's not as important as the thing that we're supposed to be doing. Um, Yeah, maybe it's our thing. Like maybe I'm suddenly like, you know what? I should post on Twitter. And this seems like super important right now because I just saw somebody else tweet this and now I have to respond to that. But it's actually, I'm supposed to be working on the script for the next episode. But having to respond to that tweet like gets me out of that. It's like this get out of what I had to do free card. And the problem is, it lands us in crisis in the future because now I didn't do the thing that I needed to do and now I am in crisis and now I have to pull all-nighters. I have to neglect myself. I have to give up self-care. I I have to let down my friend because now I don't have time to go to the party anymore because I have to get my work done because I wasn't doing it before, right? And so now I have to do all these things that I don't want to do and I feel guilty and I feel ashamed and I'm exhausted but I get it done, right? And my brain still rewards me for that because I got through the crisis. And and here's the really freaking fascinating thing. ADHD brains respond better to rewards than neurotypical brains do. And they respond less strongly to punishment. So all my brain remembers is, oh man, like it really sucked, but like I got it done. I got through that paper. I did turn it in in time. And so there's no incentive for me to start earlier next time. And there's all the incentive in the world for me to procrastinate by, you know, sometimes it's playing video games, but a lot of the time for me, it was by finding something else productive to do. And it was usually somebody else's crisis. Yeah, yeah, no, and it, it it's a big deal. You know, the boredom is our kryptonite and, and we'll do anything to avoid it, including create a crisis that we never needed to create. I mean, the, yeah. the, 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 the examples can be, can be really devastating. It's why a lot of people with ADD fall for train wrecks in, in romance because the the stimulation of, of the train wreck is is what they're looking for. And then we tend to be saviors as well. So they oh, we think we can save him or we can we can save her. You put those two together and you have a disastrous relationship. Yeah, uh, I've been there over and over again, over uh, and over through my whole life. And I could have saved myself so much pain and so much heartache if right. I had known, if I just understood understood i'm going to say this over and over again this episode because i just want people to know what i wish i had known which is if you are responding to a crisis that is because your brain is designed to respond to a crisis not because you need to respond to that crisis right and so sometimes maybe instead of going to pick up your drunk friend spring for an uber and go back to studying just recognize right. that your brain has this pull has this desire to like get out of the boring thing go do the crisis get those hero points and that's natural for us and, and then okay, and but... then learn learn to tolerate boredom learn to yeah. learn to put up with boredom that uh, part of any successful undertaking will include and as well as relationship will include moments periods of boredom how do you suggest we do that <laughs> ah it, that's uh, I, th- I think you you this is where structure comes into play and commitment uh sort of old fashioned commitment um uh, I, my wife and I once asked, uh, we were having dinner with an old lady who's since passed away, and she said she was sitting with a group of old people, and amongst all of them, they had something like 500 years of marriage. And one of them asked the question, what, uh, to what do you ascribe your ability to stay together for so long? And the one that my, that I particularly resonated with was the woman said, it comes out of an abiding desire to stay together. Aww. And it's, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, I guess, making friends with boredom. The way people need to make friends with sadness so they don't avoid it. Uh, make friends with anger so you don't avoid it. Uh, make friends, for us, the most difficult emotion is not sadness, it's not anger, it's boredom. It's which is basically the absence of stimulation, the absence of excitement. And, and it's important to be able to tolerate that rather than replace it with anger or replace it with uh, danger or replace it with these 
you know, these dopaminergic <laughs> emotions. Right. Uh, because otherwise, know. then the moment that things are peaceful in a relationship, we pick a fight, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You you stupid, ugly thing. Why did I ever settle down with you? The idea of growing old with you is nauseating. And then the next thing you know, you're off to the races. And, the and you're having a fight instead of doing yeah. your your, uh, your homework. <laughs> yeah, doing, paying your bills or whatever yeah. it is. Whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, I, my ex noticed this every every Saturday. As soon as I was done with work for the week, every Saturday I was suddenly picking fights because it was the first day during the week that I didn't have anything planned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as always, Jessica, thank you so much. You always come armed with honesty and humor and uh, wonderful insight. Can't thank you enough. That's our show for today. Uh, to learn more about Jessica, you can go to her wonderful website, howtoadhd.com. And thank you once again to Landmark College in beautiful Putney, Vermont, for making this episode possible. Landmark is the college of choice for students who learn differently. Go to lcdistraction.org for more information. Please continue to reach out to us with your questions, comments, and show ideas, like inviting Jessica to come on, by emailing <laughs> connect at distractionpodcast.com. Distraction is created by Soundscrape Media. Our producer is the wonderful Sarah Gurton, and I'm Dr. Ned Hallowell. Thank you so very much for listening.